Hello everyone. So there's been some intrigue lately where people have been suing Stable Fusion. Why? What? So apparently it's a thing about artists losing their jobs. Well, who's suing for uh, taxi drivers or factory workers? Apparently some jobs are more important than others. So I thought we we're gonna check this out and uh, see what it's all about. Oh, and by the way, if you just came for the dad joke, I'm not gonna leave you hanging. What do lawyers wear to court? A lawsuit. So we're gonna start right here, stablefusionlitigation.com. It says, we filed a lawsuit challenging Stable Fusion, a 21st century collage tool, which is ridiculous right there in, in the headline, but you know, that's what they do to, well, probably to confuse and misinform people that aren't aware of what's going on. And they continue, that violates the rights of artists. Because AI needs to be fair and ethical for everyone. Yeah, I don't think... Biased opinion. Yeah, buddy, I don't think that's your goal here. Anyway, it says here, hello, this is Matthew Butterick. I'm a writer, designer, programmer, and lawyer. In November 2022, I teamed up with the amazingly excellent class action litigators Joseph Severi, yada, 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 filed a lawsuit against GitHub Copilot for its unprecedented open, sources, open source software piracy. That lawsuit is still in progress. Sounds like great guys. Since then, we've, we've heard from people all over the world, especially writers, artists, programmers, and other creators who are concerned about AI systems being trained on vast amounts of copyrighted work with no consent, no credit, and no compensation. They have a, they have a point there. Now, full transparency, I'm obviously against this lawsuit in general. I know some other YouTubers are saying, okay, this lawsuit, lawsuit is good because then everything can be out in the open and we can move past this. And I mean, sure, yeah, that's the way of the land and that's what's going to happen with every new technology moving forward. So um, I guess, yeah, it needs to happen. And I found a couple of cool memes while checking this out. And on that topic, which is basically here, it says innovation cycle. We have a new tech release. People are frothing. People realize it's convenient for daily use. Uh, me like you after all. And... Uh, you know, that's basically how it goes. Same with computers and uh, everything else. So we're, you know, we're kind of here now. I think we're going to end up here in a bit. Anyway. Oh yeah, and to reiterate on this, uh, the systems have been trained on copyrighted work with no consent. This is true. There's no credit and there is no compensation. Now in Stable Diffusion moving forward, you can opt out of being in the training data. Uh, but I agree, this is something that needs to be looked at a little bit, how to sort that. Today we're taking another step toward making AI fair and ethical for everyone. On behalf of three wonderful artist plaintiffs, Sarah Anderson, Kelly McKernan and Carla Ortiz, we file a class action lawsuit against Stability AI, DeviantArt and Midjourney for the use of Stable Diffusion. Now, I'm, I don't want to cast any particular shadow on any of these artists, I don't know, I mean it's basically not their doing. I mean, it's, it's these guys. It's uh, Matthew and the others, and they just picked up. Okay, they just spammed a lot of artists to see who could get on the train, and basically took whoever, probably. That's my opinion of it. And they, I, I would assume that these three aren't super versed in, you know, the, the what's going on about AI. They probably have been briefed and know, you know, the basics of it, but I'm sure that's about it. Joining as co-counsel, yada, 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 yada. As a lawyer who is also a longtime member of the visual arts community, it's an honor to stand up on behalf of fellow artists and continue this vital com conversation about how AI will coexist with human culture and creativity. I mean, sure, buddy. If that's what you want to do, go for it. I mean, you will get your fame. You will get your money and some recognition. You will also be, you know, disliked by a lot of people. But, I, I mean, that's... It is what it is. You do you. Image generator companies have made their views clear. Now they can hear from artists. Well, this I think is ridiculous. Um, many of us are artists. My full-time job is an art director. So, I mean, I see AI as a tool that I can use in my work to help me work better, faster, but uh, everyone's entitled to their opinion, I guess. Again here, misinformation, and this is probably how it's gonna go. A 21st century collage tool. It's not a collage tool. Yeah, and people say, I mean, it's just images bunched together that you can pull up from a, a database. Yeah, and I, I have a meme for that. Here we go. 
AI image generation just picks pictures from a database and mashes them together. Mm. Stable Diffusion is about 4 gigabytes and was trained on over 250 terabytes worth of images where they saved. Yeah, I mean, if you just took all those images and bunched them together into 4 gigabytes, you've basically won the Nobel Prize in compression. And uh, yeah, that's uh, probably more important than what's going on right here. It's not really a collage tool. Uh, we know what Stable Diffusion is. Stable Diffusion contains unauthorized copies of millions and possibly billions of copyright images. Again, false. They have been trained on images without people's consent. True, but it doesn't contain those images. Even assuming nominal damages of a dollar per image, the value of this. I mean, this is ridiculous, this part about the damages. It's like with it's piracy all over again. Oh, 200 million people downloaded the latest um, Lord of the Rings, and so we lost 200 million ticket sales. No, not everyone would actually have uh, seen the movie. And, you know, it's the same here. It's just ridiculous numbers pulled from dark crevasses. Stable Diffusion belongs to a category of AI systems called generative AI. These systems are trained on a certain kind of creative work, for instance, text, software code or images, and then remix those, these works to derive or generate more works of the same kind. No, it doesn't remix. It learns and then takes that data, just like a human learns, and takes the, those experiences and outputs something else. Having copied the 5 billion images without the consent of the original artist, Stable Diffusion relies on a mathematical process called diffusion to store compressed copies of these training images, again wrong, which in turn are recombined, again wrong, to derive other images. It is in short a 21st century collage tool. Wrong. These resulting images may or may not outwardly resemble the training images. Yes, they may resemble the training images. If you're seeing an eye, and then from memory you're going to draw this eye, then it will resemble another eye, because that's what you've trained on. In a similar sense, the resulting images may resemble the training images. If the training images of a woman is only the Mona Lisa, yes, then all resulting images will look like the Mona Lisa. But because it's based on all these different millions, billions of images, it doesn't work like that. Not at all. Nevertheless, they are derived from copies of the training images and compete with them in the marketplace. I mean, that's at minimum Stable Diffusion's ability to flood the market with an essentially unlimited number of infringing images will inflict permanent damage on the market for art and artists. Yes, just like um, photography did and just like cell phones did for photographers with every new technological leap forward, the previous users you know of, of that tech is having a hard time yes this is true so uh, but we can't fight it i mean imagine say no no we we need to go back and, and ban photography because the artists or the painters are losing their jobs saying that today would be ridiculous and uh, that's the story of, of ai art and ai everything right now and uh, the fact that people can't see this or, or grasp beyond what's going on right now instead just look at the history we're gonna move past this and ai is going to win unless we go into some sort of technological dark ages and ban everything which um i mean of course it has also happened in history even stability ai ceo emad mustak has forecast that future ai models will be fully licensed yeah probably but stable fusion is not it is a parasite that if allowed to proliferate will cause irreparable harm to artists now and in the future yes yes so adapt make sure you adapt this is not the bad thing tech moves for forward and you know that's it i found this meme about it certain people's jobs matter more than others we talked a little bit about this in the beginning the public sees the artists losing their jobs to new tech yeah but what about you know taxi drivers typists lawyers paralegals calligraphers farmhands data entry workers hand sewers, travel agents you know any job that can be replaced by ai not as interesting to go after eh and they say here the problem with diffusion and um, they basically try to explain diffusion that it breaks down into noise and then the noise builds up to an image again. 
and you know in, in essence that's correct but they're trying to to make it sound like it breaks down and then rebuilds into the same image and and that's that's wrong the second phase is like the first but in reverse this process is depicted in the bottom row of the diagram, which reads right to left. I've recorded the steps. The churn is certain image into noise, so the AI can run those steps backwards, starting with some random noise. So the AI applies the steps in reverse by removing noise or denoising data. The AI will produce a copy of the original image again. This is wrong. It has this step here. It learns from this and, and goes to noise. And, and when it goes back, it creates something out of, of the noise, but it's not that particular image. I mean, it's not going to matter. You, you, they're not going to get that anyway if they don't want to read up on it. So basically what we have here is just a lot of explanation that's basically wrong and misinformation. There's some points, I mean, valid points to it, but hardly worth the time to go over. We're not going to look at the artists because uh, this is probably going to age like milk. So let's not throw them under the bus for now. Let's check out some cool... Um, there, there, there was a Reddit user that, that created a response to this, which I thought was pretty cool. But I thought we're going to look at some of, um, some of the funny memes about this that I found. So someone used ChatGPT here. Write a satirical The Onion headline about AI image generation, specifically the class action lawsuit here dubbed artists v text to image AI right from the point of view of someone who would defend AI image generation. And here's the headline. Artists sue AI for making their job too easy. Text to image generation accused of making art too accessible and too good. I mean, this is, um, this is basically what's going on. And uh, it sounds like a satirical The Onion article, but it's not. It's really not. So that's hilarious. When artists use copyrighted images as a reference, yeah, I think it's great. And when artists use AI image as a reference. Yeah, that was uh, about a guy who, an actual artist who used an AI image as a reference and then painted his own version of it. He received a, a lot of hate about it. So uh, that's, that's sad. It's really sad. YouTube video against AI art starter pack. Somber and pretentious tone, sampling. Same debunked examples of art theft. We deserve to be angry. Collage. Yeah, I mean, they, they use the word collage a lot, which is, you know, misinformation. Time lapse of someone drawing with a pencil. I don't understand how any of this works, but let me pretend to anyway. Yeah, I haven't actually seen any anti AI stuff that um, has some, you know, great points and great logic in it. We saw this. And again, on the topic of if, if the AI is just a, a collage tool, then who input? All these hand images. I mean, that there must be a lot of crooked hands in that data set to get to the results like this. Yeah, I wonder, um, wonder who did that. So let's go and check out this response here. And this is um, this is not a response for uh, an official response from you know the companies. This is a, a guy on Reddit to wrote this, uh, and it says AI art tools do not in any way, shape, or form collage together images. No images are stored in the checkpoints in any way, shape, or form. We talked about this. And indeed, as documented below, such a thing is literally is a literal impossibility. Rather, AI art tools work akin to seeing shapes in clouds, starting with random latent noise and trying to make it make more sense. Pushing and nudging it one step at a time based on the relationships it has learned about what is statistically normal in images. And this is more accurate to the truth. Regardless of the outcome of the lawsuit against Git. GitGub, GitGub. Uh, it should be pointed out that this is fundamentally a different thing. GitHub Copilot is trained on billions of lines of code to create checkpoints that are presumably. Uh, this is just about the, the other lawsuits. So you can go out, ignore that. By contrast, AR tools are trained on billions of images. Each is not a couple of tokens, but rather millions of pixels. Each pixel being several bytes each. It should be obvious to anyone that you cannot reversibly compress a many megapixel image down into one byte of information. 8 bits, 256, yada, 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 yada. This is a lot of information just to say what we talked about in this meme here that, you know, you can't compress all of that data. Uh, it's it's uh, with, with, the technolo with the technology we have today, it's impossible. So just... That's just debunking the, the collage argument, basically. 
While one can certainly have sympathy for artists who are faced with change in their industry, as has happened many times in the past to great resistance, such as with the adv advent of photography and later of digi to digital tools like Photoshop. Yeah, we talked about this a little bit. The simple facts are the rights of creators are not unlimited. That's literally what fair use is. And again, it goes on to talk a little bit about what we talked about earlier here in the video. Uh, let's move down again. Like many times before, artists are faced with change in their in industry brought on by advancements in technology. And while many embrace it, others fear and resist it, and one can have sympathy for those people. But again, it's not going to help. Learn the tools. I mean, if you're an artist who's against this opt out of the training data. I think that's uh, that's basically all you can do. Then get on with your life. It should go without saying, but suing someone is not a way to continue a conversation. Uh, maybe that's an American thing. I think in, in Europe in general, that's not how we do things. It's an attempt to stifle an emerging technology that helps enable millions of people to bring their visions to life via false accus accusations about how it works and accusing its users, made of, many of whom were already professional artists of being criminals. Now, I, I just in my previous remark, I don't want to bash on the whole of uh, America, but uh, you seem to sue each other a lot. I don't know. Or is that just a movie thing? Tell me in the comments below, please. Now, this is... Uh, pretty long response so i'm gonna link link it in the comments below you can go check it out for yourself it's a lot of uh, stuff going on here um there's some exp explanation of how it works and stuff like that let me know in the comments below what you think about this uh, i for sure am obviously on the side of ai i think as an artist myself this is a tool that's gonna help me not just create better stuff but it's gonna save me a lot of time and I, if i can get back some time instead of spending hours and hours and hours painting something i mean i'd like that if you're doing you know art as a hobby and you want to spend a uh, hundred hours on, on your artwork i mean go for it go go nuts no one's stopping you and again try to keep a constructive and uh, nice tone in the comments guys i'll see you in the next video have a good one see ya